Yeah, rise up, rise up, one and all. You are in the Gamby One channel, and welcome. I want to welcome you here. All your friends, your frenemies, your agents, both here and abroad, everybody. Welcome, welcome. This is your brother Mali, and we're back with another video from the gorgeous, smiling coast of Africa, the Gambia. Today, we are talking about Trojan racism. Trojan racism. What's Trojan racism? What's Trojan racism? Well, Mr. Lion. <laughs> Yes, I'm bored. Yes, Mr. Lion. Well, Trojan racism, good question. Let's go for a walk and talk about it. Right, well, Trojan racism. But let's go back in history, first of all, right? So, around, when was it? Uh, Lord, 11, I'm going to say 1194 to 1186 BC. I'm sure that's wrong, but I'm guessing here, right? So, 1194, 1186 BC. Uh, in Turkey, there was the city of Troy. The city of Troy was besieged for like 10 years, right? By the Greeks. They had them surrounded and they were waiting for the opportunity to be able to destroy the city. But they couldn't get past the city's uh, walls. So, what they did... I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm not for you. So, what they did was they decided to create this big wooden horse, right? And uh, people who were inside the horse, they then pretended to leave on their ships and go back over to Greece. And then under the, you know, uh, under, you know, while it was dark, they came back again. This time, the Turks were like, oh, isn't this nice? They've left us, the siege is over, and we've even got a big horse to celebrate. So they pulled the horse inside with their enemies inside the structure who then was able to open the doors let their brethren in and the city fell and I'm seeing the same kind of thing happening here there's people who are in, in this I wish I could have taken up shown you like the sea from over here but you'll see it in a second but what's been happening is that people are coming here uh, under the guise of doing something good for the country and they've actually got other nefarious agendas. Let's take, for example, the large uh, Chinese conference center that was been built not too far up the beach here. Now, the Chinese said, look, we hear you have a large conference happening with different Islamic countries. We love Islam, so what we're gonna do is help you, which, has been, which was your first red flag, because you know they don't. If you don't know about uh, the uh, Uyghurs, Uyghurs, uh, who are an Islamic set of people who live over in China, how they've been constantly um, persecuted, uh, moved from where they live, so on and so forth, just to keep people having one belief. But when it comes to here, they've been able to talk this good talk and they've gone ahead and said we can help you to you know make your your Islamic conference happen well by building you a brand new conference center you know what I mean so now they built this conference center the locals are like aren't you lovely thank you very much but now the Chinese have their hands all up in and their fingers all up in government they can now say yeah we want to also, it's at the beach here. We want to also build a, a fishery, right? Where we can take our trawlers out and we'll trawl all the sea, all the sea, all the sea, all the sea. For all the fish that we can find, just to then ground the sea up, uh, the fish up, regardless of what they are. And we will send those back to China for us to be able to feed our pigs. Because now they've got direct access. And because they've done this nice thing of creating this useless conference center, they now have affected this country to the point where local fishermen cannot find fish. So let's say, for example, now me, I send out, I go, I order from my fishermen 
10 kilo of snapper for example he may come back with four or five because of the fact that they are finding it difficult now this is at a time where there is no season we've had no tourism season for the past year here in the Gambia the tourism industry is the biggest as far as local or high street industries in this country so now if we've got to the point where during the time where there is no industry they can't even keep up with fish orders imagine what will happen when we actually have a season here you will find that local people will not be able to afford the prices of local fish because the prices will shoot up because there is not enough fish to go around and you'll find also that those people who are coming here on holiday will have to be paying the same prices that they're paying over in the states and over in Europe it's going to be a complete mess Trojan horse they come in chatting like as though they're here for your best interest and they clearly are not so just this week Oxfam has, has hit the headlines in the UK because of the fact that their people are going over in the guise of looking out for the people and then Trojan horse in a bunch of pedophiles to go and sexually exploit the children of the Congo they know it works because UNICEF did the same thing UNICEF also came to Africa under the guise of us helping the people they're all poor and they're all, you know they had a they had a back in the 80s they had a, a bad famine over in Ethiopia and because of that those images were then sort of associated with the whole of Africa so they could say yeah people here are starving give money to us so then we can take care of those poor starving Africans and you're giving your money to people like UNICEF and just down the beach over at Fajara you will find there pristine brand new UNICEF vehicles outside pristine condominiums with infinity pools and the like Trojan horse people are taking the the the, the good words expecting good nature behind them and in actual fact they're in there to undermine, undercut, underdevelop and ultimately to overtake the local African people. There are people who are here from other other you know countries, other races, whatever, who are here for positive reasons. And they're genuine. And if you're one of those people you are always welcome. But if you're one of these people who come here talking the good talk and you're completely nefarious just stay where you are you know if you're one of these people from china who's been seeing their brethren over in uh kenya proceeds to whip him twice. <laughs> beating their staff because they're late for work and think oh that's cool or you see uh, your, your brethren's over in uh, Zambia and they're using the Zambian uh, workforce as straight up donkeys and you think oh well, that's nice don't come here You're not, we're not, we don't need you we're not starving like that it's fine If you've seen videos like that American uh, preacher who was in Uganda and he thought that it was okay for him in his drunken stupor to start punching up hotel staff in Uganda because he knew that the hotel staff wasn't going to risk their job to just punch him in the face. Don't come here. This country is very small, it's very new, it needs uh, people with genuine intentions even if your intention is to come here and you know what I mean make money and build a life just be honest about it just be genuine about it don't go and try and screw people over don't try and screw over the country you know just to do that it's not necessary so there you go 
Trojan racism. I'm so far away from where I was. Uh, this part here, I think I'm over at, I'm there, Senegambia now. Senegambia Hotel is just up here. So I've got a nice little stroll. I hope you've liked the scenery. I hope you learned something. I hope that you consider to come over and join us here in the Gambia, whether it's for a holiday, for a break, checking out the place, or to stay. The place is all right, but it's very, very nice. I love it here. This is your boy, Brother Marty, and I'm signing off. Peace.